from Stamps to Die For. Today I'm going to be showing you a fun fold card called the Book Fold. I'm going to be starting with the Birthday Fiesta stamp set and its Coordinating Fiesta Time Framelits. Much of this card is going to be kind of like a cooking show and pre-done because it's quite a few steps, however it's not that complicated. We're going to start out with a piece of crushed curry cardstock five and a half by eight and a half and I've scored it in the middle. We're going to fold it in half and rub it with our bone folder. So this is the base of our card. Then I took a piece of four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of whisper white and ran it through the big shot using the Fiesta folder embossing folder um, that goes with part of this suite. For this project I'm going to be using the Fast Fuse. Now there's a love-hate relationship with this and I did post a helpful tip on my Facebook page the other day showing how to use this a little bit differently than snail. Now I'm going to, oh, I gotta wait. I'm getting ahead of myself. Then I cut out um, two of these little um, banners using um, this part out of the framelit set. And then I took the little half circle stamp out of the stamp set, um, this one here, and stamped them in different colors to create our little banners. Now I'm going to put some glue dots on here to adhere it to the front of our card. So I'm just going to tap some um, glue dots on and then I'm going to put it on that piece that I already put the snail on and I'm going to line it up kind of like this across the top and the reason I didn't want to put that on there is because I'm going to have a little trimming to do when it's all said and done. So I'm going to take this one again and put my glue dots on here and then we're going to go from this top corner down to here. And you can see what I meant about I need to trim this off so I wanted to be sure not to put it on my card front just yet. So now we're ready to place this on our card front like this. Okay, so then our next little step is I cut out th or I stamped three cactuses on a piece of I believe it was two and a half inches by five and a half inch piece of whisper white and cut them out with the coordinating cactus framelit and I'm going to just stick a little oops got it upside down that's not good Whoop. that's what happens when you don't use the trick right I'm going to place one here and I'm going to stick one over here. And I've got some dimensionals on here, so I'm going to peel this off and I'm going to be sticking this just on the card front right here, like that. Now I've pre stamped the Fiesta like there's no other Mignana on a piece of, let's see, it was three and a quarter by four and a half inch piece of cardstock and I punched it in this, or put it in the center. And then I just am going to go in here upside down. This is the triple banner punch and it has like a one inch, a one and a half and a two inch, but this is not quite one inch. So I wanted to be sure and just center it here like this. And again, like this here. And then we're going to put that on our card front like this. So that is the front of our card. The inside of the card, we're starting out with a piece that's five inches by eight and a half, or excuse me, five inches by eight inches. It's Melon Mambo. And I'm going to put this in my cutter at one inch. And I'm taking my cutting blade and I'm going to go up here and I'm putting this at one inch. So it's one inches here and one inches here. 
And I'm going to cut and run this down to the 7 inch. I'm going to flip it over and repeat. So I'm going to go from the 1 inch to the 7 inch. And then I'm going to take my scoring blade and we're going to put this in our cutter at the 1 inch mark. And I'm going to score from that cut point, which is at 1 inch, down to 4 inches. I'm going to slide it over a half an inch and score from the 1 inch to the 4 inch again. Then I'm going to put it at 2 and a half inches and I'm going to score the top just to the cut. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom and score from the bottom just up to that cut mark. I'm going to slide over to 4 inches and I'm going to score the entire card. And then I'm going to go turn it around, which is easier for me. I'm going to repeat. I'm going to score from the 1 inch up to the 4. Whoops, excuse me. Did that backwards. Never mind. You're going to go from the 1 inch to the 4 inch. So you're going to just score from the cut point to the cut point. Slide it over a half an inch and you're going to again score from the cut to the cut. You're going to go to two and a half inches and you're going to score from the edge just up to that cut mark. And again you're going to score from the edge just up to that cut mark. And there we have our score marks. So just to repeat that, you're going to cut in one inch from the edge from the one inch to the seven inch mark on both sides. Then you're going to score just from the cut mark to the cut mark at one inch, a half an inch, and then you're going to score just from the edge of the card to the cut mark two and a half inches like this. Four inches all the way across, Rotate your thing in your cutter, repeat at the one inch from the cut scoop mark to the cut mark, a half, one and a half, two and a half just from the edge of the card to the cut, and here. And this is where a bone folder comes in very handy. So we're going to just take our card and we're going to fold it in half to start with, like that. Then you're going to these are going to come out and the center is going to come in. So these we want to just score the edges. I'm going to repeat that. And I use the bone folder because it just gives us a way better crease. And then these you're going to tuck over and I just did like this. You're going to this one's going to come out, that one's going to go in, so you have your mountain and your valley, and we're going to just give it a good score. And that's our fun fold for today. You can see it from the top, but when your card folds up, it folds up like this. You can see I added the little row of streamers here, and at each fold is where I made sure that the, the little skinny part was so that when it folds, it folds up really easily. And now I'm going to take my 2 and 3 eighths inch and 3 inch piece of designer paper and I'm just going to put this right here. I've got another one. This is from the um, Fiesta, Fiesta Birthday designer paper. And we're going to put the other streamer right here. I think on my, my original one I made sure they lined up perfectly, but of course I didn't do that on this one, so I'll show you on the other one how I cut one piece of paper and then cut it in two so the lines all matched up. But that's not the important. The important part is our fold today. So I also have a couple of smaller pieces of paper this one is 7 eighths inches by 1 and 7 eighths, and I cut two of them 
out of this and this is just going to go along the bottom to give our card a little bit more design right here and then I've got two more pieces that are 7 8 inches by 2 and 5 16 now normally I don't like to give you those crazy measurements but I wanted just a little bit of the pink showing I didn't want too much and so that would be the five little lines. My husband always laughs when I talk about the little lines. So there we have the bottom. Now I stamped um, wishing you the happiest of birthdays on a piece of Whisper White and cut it out with our layering ovals. And what I love about our layering oval set is that they, they mat so beautifully with the scallop edge. And so I'm going to adhere this. This is the two and three eighths inch oval and this one is three inches across. This is two and three eighths inches. So if you're wanting to know what size of the ovals I use, that's what I used. Final touch, which is my favorite part about this card, um, is we've, I'm going to take and I'm cutting out one of the little pinatas that faces to the right and one that faces to the left. So now we have our little pinatas that are cut out and I'm going to take, um, I'm going to use a glue dot because I can control them a little better on this small piece and I'm going to just run a couple of glue dots on the back of this and I'm going to stick my string so that it's right between his ears on this one. And then I'm going to take my other little pinata and just squeeze it together. So now I have a pinata on both sides. I'm going to flip this over and we're going to take a little piece of tape and I'm going to tuck him down in the front of the card. So see, he's going to be hanging down here. Oofta. Can, you, can I make it look any more different, difficult? You know what? I'm going to just lay this like this. I'm going to put, <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to put my tape on like this, and then I'm going to put it on the front. There's your chuckle for the day. If I could make it any more complicated. So then we're going to take that, and we're going to, glue it to the inside of our card and one of the reasons I use fast fuse for this is because the fast fuse um, is a little stronger than our snail and so for a project like this you want to use the fast fuse. Now you notice I'll run it you don't want to push as very hard with this and it's best if you hold it without your thumb on the top, but I'm so used to using snail where the thumb goes on the, or the pointer goes on the top. So there we have, um, make sure I get this on the card right. So we're going to put this in the center like this. And we're going to just glue this down. We have our fun fold card with the little hangy Pinata. Of course, you can't really see it tipped this way, but um, I will show, show you a picture of it when we're all done. So there's our fun fold card for today. And I almost forgot I had stamped and pre-cut a little flower to stick on our cactus. So there you have it. That's today is the fun fold book fold card. And if you enjoyed... Um, watching the video today. There's a lot more on my YouTube channel. And do step over to www.stamps2die4.com and check out some of my other fun projects. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Happy stamping! Mm -hmm.